I'm DM Scotty and welcome to my channel. I call myself a DM crafter because I make a lot of stuff for my table. Uh, this is episode one Redux and I'm upgrading this episode because I uh, have some better equipment so I want to do a better uh, presentation and more concise presentation uh, on this video. So with that we will continue. Now you're in for a treat today because I'm going to show you how to make all the dirt cheap terrain and tiles you want to make. This episode is going to center on the basic tile creation, which is the kind of the cornerstone of my technique, and then we'll move on from there. So here is kind of a typical dungeon setup using the uh, 2.5D tiles. So here I have my adventurers coming down the corridor, and here's a goblin guard room, and they're playing some bones on the table. Then we move over here, and here's a storage room. Okay. Now, obviously I wouldn't set all this up uh, until they explore this area. So what I'd have is have the adventurers come down and they either break in or listen. And then you know, I could easily set up the tile you know, after they move into that area. That can be, this can be one thing that's uh, beneficial about these tiles is they're just really quick to set up. You just throw this down and you're good. Um, with some of the 3D or other, you know, or if you have to draw it, you gotta get players gotta wait while you draw it. So I can usually set up stuff less than 30 seconds. So. Um, or less so you know it's it's really easy to do now a couple features you'll notice is these really look like stone um, but the walls are short and the reason for that is it's really beneficial to play the uh, one thing I don't like about the 3d uh, dungeons is they have walls that are this hot tall and like when you're in a dungeon that's that's small like this it can be really hard to get in here and move the figures around um, so I like this that also to see what's going on. So I like that the walls are simulated um, instead of actually there. And you'll notice I still have some 3D elements. Like I have the doors are 3D elements. You know, the figures and all that kind of, you know, dungeon uh, paraphernalia is all 3D. It's just the tiles themselves are the 2.5D. So this is kind of the basis of my technique. And... Um, now I'm going to go back and talk a little bit about why you might want a 2.5D and then we'll get right into making these tiles. Now that I've shown you the tiles, I want to say a quick word about why. Why bother? Uh, well, there are many reasons. Uh, one reason is this method, method is dirt cheap. Um, we're making it out of junk cardboard. You can go anywhere and grab cardboard for these projects. Uh, most people throw cardboard away in the droves, so it's very easy to get cardboard. The, really the only, the most expensive thing about the project uh, is the texture paint, but you can even get around that as you'll see in some later videos. So stay with us. So beside the fact that they're just so easy and cheap to make, and you can make whatever size or quantity you need very cheaply, uh, there are some really some other advantages. Um, you noticed uh, when I showed you the tiles, I talked about the 2.5D. And that is really for ease of play. It just makes it much easier to get your figures in those confined spaces. Now, a lot of those 3D dungeons, they look cool, but it's very hard to get your figures in those 3D spaces. So that's why I do those short walls. So they're simulating the walls, but they're not blocking play. And I love that in games. It just makes it so much easier where everybody's sitting around the table, as opposed to a war game where they might stand up. Another reason um, is that you, although you can get uh, tiles pre-printed, um, you can't always really find what you want. Um, you know, in a magical world where there's strange and interesting locations, you know, you could have hundreds of pre-printed tiles and not ever have a tile you need. So, you know, without the basic tile. So that's what I love about this method too. You can make anything you want and. In my later videos, I really show that in practice. Um, it's really true. So if you don't use pre-printed tiles, uh, what are your other options? One option is use a, a grid map and just draw on it with markers, those uh, washable markers. Uh, but those really aren't that exciting. Um, they, they can give you a position where you are in combat, but they really don't convey kind of the, the feel of the, of the dungeon. And I really like how these tiles help with the immersion of the game. You know, you're, you're like looking down your figure and, and you're really involved in the um, locale 
of where your, where your figure is at. And I really like that about these tiles and techniques. Also, you can buy the uh, 3D dungeons, uh, which are very expensive. These tiles are pennies on the dollar, you know, compared to those type of things. You can make as many as you want. Uh, with 3D dungeons, you never seem to have enough or you're always trying to get more, which is a, a big money pit. Plus, there's the storage. These tiles will store flat, uh, essentially flat, and then, you know, with that stuff, you need a lot of space to store that. You can also go another route with the Hearst Arts. Now, I'm not knocking uh, Hearst Arts makers, but that stuff takes a long time. It can be very expensive, and um, it takes a lot to make one room. I, I've made giant rooms where if you made it out of Hearst Arts, it'd be like 300 pounds. Um, so, you know, in ca cave systems and rooms. So, um, you know, that's another advantage of this system over that type of 3D stuff. Now that I've talked the reasons why you might want to do this method, let's go to the table and I'll show you the tools of the trade. Here I have a hodgepodge of tools on my table and I'll explain what each one is used for. Now first off you're going to want to measure out your dungeon tiles and you'll need a, so you'll need straight edge. So I have a ruler here but I often use a T-square that I have. It's a giant T-square so uh, it's a very long, it's a yardstick long T-square and that's great for measuring right angles but you can also use uh, an angle or a protractor to get your right angles or anywhere in between. So that, that's how you can, what you can use to measure stuff. So you'll need measuring tools like that. And then the, the second most important tools besides actually measuring out uh, your pieces on cardboard will be to um, uh, cut them out and put them together. So I just simply use a regular box cutter. That's all I use to cut them out. You probably have one of these lying around the house. Uh, if you don't, just go to the store, buy one. They're really cheap. And then to assemble the walls of the tiles, I will use glue guns. Okay, You'll notice I have two different glue guns. I've got a smaller one and a larger one. Now when you get, I usually use the large one for assembling tiles, but as you get more into more detailed work later on in the craft, you'll want a small one. Um, it, it just makes it easier to manipulate. Now you'll notice that these two also don't have uh, plastic on the nozzles. Um, I like that because I often move the, the, glue gun, uh, the glue gun glue around with the nozzle and if, the, if it's covered with plastic it makes it a little safer but it's harder to manipulate that glue. So I prefer to use glue guns without the plastic protectors on them and actually they're cheaper than the ones with the protectors so uh, that's a consideration. Alright so that's the glue gun stuff and now we move on to some secondary parts. Now I often like to add small details to my tiles or rubble and what I use that do with that is I use a white glue. I don't use a school glue. Use an actual um, white glue that's either glue all or um, a, a specific craft white glue. Don't use school glue. It's not as strong. Uh, I also use for the rubble, I also use uh, what I call construction sand. It's, it's called standard sand at uh, the hardware stores. And it basically, it just has different size aggregates in it. So it's not play sand. It has different size pieces. So there's pebbles and sand and everything. And this works great for rubble on the tiles. Okay. Um, I've had people ask me about kitty litter. Um, kitty litter is not a good substitute for this because it's made of clay and it will break off your tiles very easily. It's very brittle. The sand will not come off. Once you glue it down, uh, I've never had it come off. So. Um, I would re definitely recommend the sand. And you buy a bag of this, you'll have you'll have rubble for life. You'll never need to buy another bag. One bag is all you'll need. Okay. So now um, I'm going to move on to the painting. All right. In the painting department, I've got several sprays here. I've got a flat black paint, uh, which is what I use to base my tiles. Now I use the cheapest black I can find. Usually it's at a big box store, and I pay a little bit over a buck a can. So. Don't buy the, the spray paint that's five bucks a can, you're wasting your money. Go find the cheapest you can find somewhere, and that's what you can use. Just use flat black. Now the secret to the texture on the tiles is the stone texture. Okay, um, this stuff is, 
is fairly expensive. It's about eight bucks a can, uh, and it can be more depending on where you buy it. But um, I have also found that uh, people out of the states have a hard time getting this stuff. And I do have a video later on where I show a sponge technique that can replace this. But in general, I use this for my towels because I really like it. For one, it's just super quick. Um, and as you see, in the, as, as I talk about in the video, you'll see how I use it. It's super quick and it also gives strength to the tiles. So uh, I, I highly recommend this, um, but you, you wouldn't have to use this if you didn't want to. This, but this makes for a quick tile. Now, the reason I use the black is because if you spray this on a tile and try to cover the tile with this, you're going to be spending a lot of money because this stuff is expensive. So what I do is I paint my tiles black first with this and that that covers most of the tile and then I then I hit it a little bit with this just enough to give it a stone texture that way you don't have to spray and spray and spray and spray and try to cover up the cardboard it's mostly covered up with the black already you're just adding the uh, the stone texture on top of that so so that's why I do it in the two-part method also I do some detailing on the wall edges and if you're just doing the standard kind of dungeon uh, crypt tiles all you really need are three colors. Um, I've got acrylic craft paint here. I've got black. I've got a light gray. It could be really any light gray. And this is, I generally use a pewter gray, which is just a regular normal gray. And uh, these three colors are really all you need uh, to start the tiles. I also use brushes, uh, a lot of flat, ed flat edged brushes. And you can buy these at just about any box, big, big box store in like a pack. And they're fairly cheap if you get them in a pack. So. There you go. Now, if you don't um, have any of this, um, you know, this can be a little expensive to start, uh, but a lot of people have at least some of these items, um, like I use scissors for cutting stuff, and, you know, they might have a box cutter already, or you might have a glue gun around the house, uh, or a craft glue, you know, so you may not have to buy every single thing. I just want to show you what you would need. Uh, this is absolutely everything you will need. Um, to start this crafting and then you can move up from there now I do have one more thing here it's a stick um, and how I play is I measure uh, distances with a stick because I don't as I as I uh, talked about I don't well I you know I don't know if I talked about but if I but I don't use grids okay so I measure the distances and I use a stick okay that's because I don't, so I don't have to put the grids on the tiles but um, so ju this is just a quarter inch stick you can get these at uh, craft stores or or hardware stores and they're just really cheap. Uh, so I just measure these out to whatever length is the standard length for the game and then use the sticks for measuring in the game. So that's uh, the last thing you might need. But um, anyways, so we've got all, these are all the crafting materials that you will need. So uh, let's go to the table and I'll talk about some, I'll talk about some uh, cardboard. So here's some cardboard examples, and, and all cardboard is not created equal. So um, right here I have some card stock, okay? It doesn't have corrugation. Um, it's just a piece of thick um, paper, okay? Now you can get this. This is, a lot of these come in the bottom of boxes, and you can, st you can steal them out of there. Or you can get them um, from cereal. You could, if you have a cereal box, you could cut up a cereal box and use it. So you don't really need... Uh, to find these kind of individual sheets like this. Um, but, you know, you can use them for just household uh, items that you buy at the store and just cut up the box. So, th yeah, that's the difference between cardstock and cardboard. Um, the cardstock um, doesn't have the corrugation. Okay, now I have the regular cardboard, okay? And this is a cut piece I did. And you can see that it has the corrugation, okay? And there are several different types of cardboard. Um, this is the standard size cardboard, I call it. And this is thin. Um, this is really thin cardboard. This is from a FedEx box, and it has a really thin corrugation in it. And I use this a lot for certain things. I won't really be using it in this video, but in, other, in later videos I will use it. There's also a thicker cardboard um, that uh, appliances and stuff come in. It, it can be like double thick. Um, basically, it's like a double thick corrugation. It's like almost like two regular pieces of cardboard sandwiched together. Um, I generally don't use that 
except for really large tiles. Um, it's hard to cut. It can be really it can be really hard to cut. So I generally just use the the single ply cardboard. Now I have had people talk about um, that sometimes the car the single ply cardboard can buckle when you paint it. Um, one reason that's one reason why I use the black spray paint. If you paint it by hand with wet paint, that almost always will buckle the cardboard. Uh, so I find that if you if you spray it with spray paint first um, and then hit it with a texture paint, it generally doesn't buckle uh, that much. Uh, if it does, you can usually just bend it back into shape, bend it the reverse way. Um, some people do like to use the, the double thick cardboard, but I find it's it's just really hard to cut. Um, but um, you know that's a preference. Also, I've had some people stick uh, skewers, um, barbecue skewers, into the corrugation to help with uh, with uh, tile warping. But in, but in most cases, I generally don't have a problem with tile warping. Um, some people do. So that's just something to watch out for when you're building your tiles. So that's that, that's really the cardboard. And uh, so now let's go to the table and we'll start constructing. Now here's just an old Office Depot box, and uh, like I say, you can scavenge cardboard almost anywhere. People are just getting, they're glad to get rid of it, they're glad to give it to you. So go to stores, you know, don't, don't buy cardboard. People will be more than glad to give you cardboard. Okay, so I got my box, and I um, think I'll, uh, I'll do a general kind of dungeon room. So I'm going to use my... Um, ruler, and I'll measure it down. And I'm not going to worry about it right now, because I'm just going to use my... I'm not worried if that's straight or whatever. I'm just I just need a line to start. Okay, so what I can do is use my um, I'll decide how big I want it. So I'm going to do um, I'll do like eight inches. So okay, I'll start there. Okay, so I've got this eight inches. So now what I can do is I can um, put this on the line. And that, so I can get a 90 degree, or you could use your square and uh, do that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to continue this. Um, Make it eight inches. Okay, so I'll just measure that up. And I like to use a uh, a sharpie. It makes it easy to see. Okay. Okay. So. So now I've got that. What I'm going to do is uh, go across. So I will use my square, start there, make sure you get it straight, then you can just finish it up. All right, so we got that. So basically like a square room. Okay, now I want to, um, make it a little more interesting. This is just kind of a square. So let's do this. Let's we'll measure two inches in here. Okay, and what we can do is measure two this way. Get that. that. And then all I have to do is go across these two marks. 
So now, to kind of mark that I'm gonna cut these two corners out, you can just do like this. That'll kind of remind you that you're gonna cut those corners out. Okay, now, um, we wanna mark where the doorway is gonna be. So let's get a measurement. So we're not quite four. So I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate there. And that would be the center where the door would be, okay? Now, I like to use um, some old Mage Knight doors that I've crafted for my dungeon, or that I've got for my dungeons. So I use that for the basic size. Now, um, depending on what size door you have, you could make different ones. But I, so I'll just mark this. That looks like about the center. And there we go. So that's where I wanna go uh, for the door. So that'll be the door. Okay. Now, uh, all it comes down to is cutting it out. So I'll use my um, my box cutter, and I'm going to cut this out, and then we'll come back to, and go to the next step. All right. So we've got our room cut out, and uh, that's you know your standard tile. That's all there is to it. Now, um, now the touch tone of my technique is that I put the simulated walls on the tiles, and those are just strips of cardboard. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, it's really nice to start with a, with one that's kind of square like this, or rectangle. Um, this is just a box flap. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out strips on this piece of cardboard. So I'll take the piece, and I like to use uh, centimeter wide um, strips. You can choose what whatever you like. I find that centimeter wide works good. So I'm just going to mark, you know, over... I'm going to go to 10 strips, okay? And I need to go up. Okay, so I've got those marked. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out all the strips, okay? So I'll go ahead and do that and come back. I've uh, drawn all my lines, so I measured out the marks and draw the lines with the straight edge. And these will be my wall sections, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my uh, box cutter and I'll cut along here, okay? And I'm gonna cut these out in strips, all right? So now, uh, one important thing though when you cut these strips, okay, there's two sides to the cardboard. One is the corrugation, the wavy part, and the other is the non-corrugated side. So it's, the corrugation is going this way, okay? So if you cut the strips this way, they'll be very weak and fall apart. So don't make that mistake. Always draw them, uh, draw your strips against the corrugation so that you'll have that strength built right into the wall itself. So now I'll cut these out and uh, we'll come back for the next step. So we have our strips and we have our tile and we're good to go, okay? So now it's just a simple matter of assembling this, all right? So what I will do is I will take a strip, okay. Oh, one last thing I want to talk about too is generally cardboard has two sides. One is kind of a smoother side and one is more of a, uh, you can kind of see the corrugation. I try to cut the tiles on the smoother side. Um, with the texture paint, it's not a huge deal, but if you're hand painting, it can really make a difference. Um, just a little side note there. Okay, so now we've got our tile and now let's add some walls to this. So what we can do is uh, we can either apply glue, hot glue to the strip or to the tile itself. I'm just going to apply it to the tile. So I'll grab my big hot glue gun, drag it across the edge there. And you could pre-cut this, but I'm not going to go into for this wall here. So I just put it to the edge, make sure it's lined up correctly. All right, so we have our first wall applied, okay? Now, I'll just cut that with the scissors. All right, and there's the first wall. Now you may get these little stringy things also with hot glue, just pull those off. Uh, a friend of mine at the DMG likes to call these the wisps. So uh, yeah, just pull those off. So now you can use your pieces uh, to complete the walls. Now this one's a little short, so I'll save this for another part. But then um, I'll just grab another wall and I'll continue. 
So we just line it up and uh, now we're going to glue it. So we got another bead on there, grab our wall section, butt it up against the other wall, line it up, and bam, we're good to go. That hot glue works really quickly. Uh, one little trick I like to do too is um, where the corner joints come together, um, I like to put a little bit of hot glue on there and then just kind of drag the tip over it. And that secures it as well as just kind of hides that. So let me uh, cut this off now. All right. So now we will just, I'll just continue around the piece. And remember, I'm going to make the short pieces here because there's a door. Uh, there'll be a door here, so I don't want to, I just want to have the, the uh, pieces come up to the edge of that like this. All right. So I'll continue this around, then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've got it all going all the way around. Now corners like this is where it can get a bit tricky, okay? So you want to think about it before you just go slapping stuff down, okay? Because you're going to have um, the wall coming like this, and you have two options. You can either make it like this and then this wall connects, or you can make it like this and this wall connects, okay? But you want to make sure that you leave, um, you don't go too far, because if you put it like this, and then you put this on, um, it's not, it's not going to look good unless you, if you don't want it to connect, but if you want it to connect, you want to make sure you have it right. So what I do is put down the, you can put down the piece of a, a wall you're going to use and kind of mark where, how far it comes. So same here. All right. So now I can apply that safely. Without worrying about it. That's not going to be correct. Okay, now obviously uh, you can't cut this one off, so you're going to have to cut this one, pre-cut this one to uh, length. So I'll put that there, my line. So now all there is left with this section is to glue it down, so I'll grab my glue gun again. Make sure you put a little bit of glue on those ends there to kind of anchor it to those walls. And then just pop that in there. All right. So um, what I'm going to do too is, like I did on the others, I'll put a little bit of glue there. And then you can kind of smear that out. And that'll kind of blend the walls into each other. And give it strength. So, all right, cool. So, um, let's see here. So now I have this excess here, and I'll just uh, trim that off. My scissors. All right. So now what I need to do is to measure to the door. So I'll just take my piece, uh, this excess piece I have here, and uh, measure up to the door. I'll just trim that. Fill that in, some hot glue. And bam, okay. So now really all that's left with this tile is to um, do the mirror, the exact same thing we did on this side on the other side. So um, I'll go ahead and do this over here and uh, then we'll come back. So here's our finished basic tile. I've got all the walls on. Um, now you'll notice that if you turn it this way, you'll still see the corrugation. But as far as I'm concerned, um, when I'm playing the game, if I'm looking down and I don't see the corrugation, it doesn't bother me. If I have a piece where the corrugation is standing up, I generally cover that up with cardstock, and I have a lot of videos uh, later on that talk about that. But yeah, for my basic tiles, I don't cover this edge. Now, uh, if you want to, you can go to all that. It's a lot of work um, to do it, and you can go, you can do that if you want. But in my opinion, they they look great uh, as they are. You're looking down on the piece, 
So you're not really seeing that corrugation anyway. Um, so I just think it's a lot of extra work for no, not really any reward. But uh, it is an option if you want to do that. So now uh, we've got the tile all assembled. So the next part would be to paint it, okay? And so um, I'm going to use my uh, black uh, base paint. Uh, this is the cheap black, uh, uh, flat black base paint that I talked about earlier in the, the, the tool section. So I'll spray that up. And then um, after, I, after I spray it, after you let it dry, then I will hit it with the um, stone texture, okay? So um, I'm not going to show that part. All you do is you just take this outside or in a ventilated area, spray it with the black, uh, let it dry, uh, and the flat black dries very, very quickly, just within minutes. Uh, and then you can hit it with the stone texture. Now the stone texture, you want to give it some time to dry. I would wait at least a couple hours before you manipulate it, and if you can wait longer, that's even better. But, um, so we'll go, well, I'll go hit it with the flat black, then hit it with the stone texture, and then I'll come back and show you the basic tile, and then we'll work on some details from there. Now here we go, here's our uh, finished tile and you can see it uh, looks really nice with the stone texture on it. Uh, definitely looks like a uh, dungeon. Now, um, but it is kind of flat. I mean, it does have the texture on it, but it's kind of flat. And I like to add a little bit of embellishment to this. Um, and I'm just going to use the three colors that I talked about earlier. The uh, pewter gray, uh, the country gray, you can use any light gray, and this is a black, okay? Now first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the edge of the walls. And I like to do that because it brings out the dimension of the tile. Okay, So I'm just going to use a wide flat brush, uh, grab some on the edge of the brush like this, and then don't get too um, heavy with it. Just hit the edge and go like this and you're going to pick out that edge, okay? And it's not a huge difference. It's a fairly subtle difference, but it really makes a big difference um, on the look of it. So you, can see, you can see that that wall is really starting to pop out there. And so I just go, I'll just go all the way around, and uh, then I'll come back and we'll go to the next step. So there we go, I've got that all finished. You can see that does add a bit to the tile. It really makes the wall seem to pop out a bit and not just blend into the tile. There's another thing you can do to add even more dimension to the tiles. And this isn't necessary, but I always like to do it to my tiles. And I'm gonna use kind of a rounded brush, um, flat rounded brush, and I'm gonna get it very wet, and I'm gonna grab some black, okay? And I'm making this wet, this black very wet, okay? Then I'm gonna kind of follow the walls and go around, okay? Now be careful, you don't want this too dark, okay? Um, you want it to make it look, the goal is to make it look like a shadow, okay, when you go around. So you don't want it too dark. You can, if you make it too light, you can always go back and add it and add to it, but if you make it too dark to start, then you're kind of stuck. So, you know, don't just put it up the paint on full strength. This is very watered down uh, paint. And I'm sure you can already see that already, how that shadow is really also really popping that wall out, making it, giving it some, a lot of dimension where there's really no dimension, but it's really adding to it to make it look like it has dimension, okay? So this is a step I highly recommend, you know. Um, it's not that hard. All right, so there we go. Nice. Uh, really looks like it. The walls are popping up. Uh, also, what you can do is, um, if you don't want it to be so nice looking, like if it's a castle, you may want to leave it. But if you want it to be kind of scuffed up and things, you can kind of drag the brush on the surface and give it a little bit of scuffing. 
and then I won't make it look so pristine. Okay? And this is watered down. I'm not using this black full strength. If you do, it'll it'll be too much. Okay? It's just a light touch. Okay, so there we go. So there's there's a nice little bit of scuffing on that tile. Now, um, I was talking about the gray, but I haven't used it yet. Now I'm going to use the next step. The next step is, uh, often in these older dungeons, it's kind of nice to add some um, rubble to the dungeon, even if it's not a ter even if it's not a terrain, uh, you know, even if it doesn't hamper movement. The look of it is really nice. It really can add to uh, the, how the dungeon looks, that it's old and crumbly and that kind of thing. So uh, we'll, go, we'll do that step next. Now this step involves the white glue and the construction sand. Now remember, uh, I was showing these at the beginning of the video and with the equipment. And remember, this is not play sand. This has all different sizes of aggregate in it. So don't get play sand. That won't look as good. You Make sure you use the construction sand. This stuff's really cheap. A bag of it is like a dollar or something, and it'll last you forever. So, um, yeah. And you can use it for tons of stuff in the crafting. I use it all the time. Okay, so now let's, let's add a few rubble piles. Let's make this a little dingier and dirtier looking. So... Uh, I'm just going to use my white glue, and I'll just start making puddles, okay? So I'll we'll put some in the corner, we'll put one here, over here, and maybe in this corner too. Okay, be generous, but don't get too crazy with it. And don't just make it a circle. You want to make it um, so it's not geometrical and everything. So that uh... all right. So I think that's enough. Okay. So now it's just a simple task of just grabbing the sand in a small cup or whatever you have, and then just dump it on. Just dump it on that glue. Just cover it all the way up. Okay, so now I'm going to let that sit, and uh, we'll let it dry. I usually let it dry about a day. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do that, but I paint it, so I find that if I if I paint it too soon when the paint's not, or I'm sorry, when the glue's not all the way dry, that it will kind of it can work loose. So I prefer to just wait uh, a whole day and then and then paint it. Now uh, you could do all your tiles at once, so then you're all ready to go. Um, we need to paint. So we'll let this we'll let this sit, and then we'll move on to painting that rubble. I've uh, let my tile dry for a day, and now we just need to remove the uh, sand from the tile. So we'll just do this. Then I can save that for another another use. All right, so now you can use a little brush and any loose pieces. You can also help get some of the dust off. There'll be a little bit of dust there. All right, so that's looking good. So our rubber piles are ready. Now we need to paint those. Right now they kind of just look like piles of swell, piles of sand. Uh, but we want to change those into the rubble, and uh, the best way to start with that is to use the black. I'm going to use some black acrylic, uh, a medium brush. I'm going to get it very wet, and this will help to make the paint soak into the uh, rubble itself. And you want to make sure that the sand or the the uh, uh, white glue is dry before you do this, because if you do this and the white glue is not dry, then it'll tend to come off. So I would definitely recommend waiting a day, give it a day to dry just to be safe. You could you could do it sooner than that, but what I like to do is, you know, for you know, I always think about workflow when I'm making this kind of stuff and um, I'll work on something else while something else is, while another thing is, another project is drying or you know, I'm on a step of a project, I'll do 
I'll do it in steps. So I'll do a project. I'll do all the rubble on tiles or something like that and then move on to another project. So that way you're not just sitting there waiting for one project to dry. Now you can also kind of pull out from the rubble itself to kind of give like a little, maybe it fell from the ceiling or, you know, whatever. So now we'll finish uh, painting up the rest of these and we'll come back for the next, we'll let these dry and come back for the next step. My rubble piles are dry and they just like look like black piles. So I need to rectify that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pewter gray I talked about, just the craft paint. I'm going to use a flat brush. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the dry brush technique, you just take a brush, uh, dip it in the paint. You don't so saturate it. Just get a little bit on the edge of the brush like this. And then just kind of pull it over the surface. Okay. You're not trying to fill the whole thing in. You're just trying to pick out the detail. You want to keep that shadow on the... So there you can see what it looks like there. So it, it looks like it has more dimension than just if you just painted it gray. All right. So now we'll do the same thing to the rest of these piles. And then we'll come back and um, do the last step. For my last step, I'm going to use a light gray. And this is a country gray. You could use a dolphin gray also. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Take my flat brush and then just dry brush over the other gray. So this will give it a, a bit of a highlight like I did on the wall. Okay, And that just gives it some a little more dimension. Alright, so there we go. So there's our rubble and our tile is complete. Now with this basic technique you can make any size, any shape, uh, any kind of tile you can think of. The rest of my series deals with um, how you can modify these tiles to really get different types of effects um, or add um, elements to the tiles to make them um, more 3D in the battles. Um, so the tiles themselves, this is, this is really all you really need to know to make uh, as many uh, different types of tiles as you want. Now as you notice, I don't use grids on my tiles and I want to go to a little segment at the end here and talk about, and talk about that. Going back to our basic uh, dungeon setup, I want to talk also about that there are no grids on these tiles. And, um, you know, a lot of people feel that they need grids to play, but you really don't. I just feel they really distract from the game and make it more feel more like a board game than an RPG. Um, and really, the only thing you need to avoid the grid is a measuring stick, okay? Now this is a this is a standard measure for um, you know like a, a player character, and I have it marked out in inches too. So if you need that, so you could have them move you know three inches to the door, and then you know uh, they probably have to stop because they have to deal with the door. But um, you, so you can you can figure out where everybody how far everybody can move. So say the wizard wants to move here, you know he can move here. He's got plenty of, and then you know um, there. So then you know I didn't use a grid at all. Um, and that's just super simple and you know the grid is one inch so every inch on this stick is a grid there is a grid mark basically so that's really all you need to know if you you know if the wizard you know opens the door and um, shoots a fireball in there you know and hits the goblins uh, if it has a five inch radius there's five inches go and everything there is hit that's really all there is to it um, so measuring is very easy to do, and that's why I don't use the grids, um, because it's just, you really don't need it. It just, I think it really takes away from the immersion. And the second thing is, for grids, is imagine having to draw or mark all the grids on these tiles. That's a lot of extra work. Why put yourself through all that extra work when you don't really need to? All you need are a few of these, and you are good to go. Hey crafters, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the DMs Craft. Uh, make sure to subscribe and I have tons of other videos as you can see. I am the originator of the 2.5D method of crafting tiles. 
I also do dirt cheap terrain for the table. If all this intrigues you, make sure you check out all the videos below. Also, uh, join my forum. We have lots of great crafters on there who give uh, advice. I have a link above and below. And last but not least, remember, go forth and craft!